So today I'm really only selling one thing here today. I've heard so far millions and billions of consumers all between us. The agencies here, the owners here, the clients here. So what I really want to convince you, by the time we get to the coffee break in about 15 and a half minutes, how long have I got? Is that between us we have a fantastic opportunity really to help accelerate certain ideas that can change the world. So this will probably be a presentation you, you haven't had that much before. So trying to convince you by the time you have your coffee that if we work together, we can have some amazing impacts and not only deliver some of our business outcomes, but do some good as well. So as we heard, global CSR director, Corporate social responsibility, somebody you probably have never heard of standing in front of you right now. Um, and I will tell you a little bit about the work that I do and hopefully encourage you to take those things away and ask your agencies, your employers, your businesses, what are we doing about these things and how can we work together to have this kind of impact. And I'll show you a few ideas, a few campaigns from last year where innovation really comes together with doing good and hopefully spark some inspiration amongst all of you. So starting off with the first part of my day job, which is really looking at making sure that we cut our carbon footprint. It's one of my main responsibilities at the agency, making sure that we fall in line with the Paris Accords in 2015. And have you ever thought about what energy you use in your organizations when you work? We have a target of hitting 100% renewable by the end of 2020. And really every company right now working in a digital economy should have a similar target. Because we all need to really get together and make sure that we cut the carbon footprint and cut the pollution of the work that we do increasingly as we move towards a more digital world. So we're well on track. Uh, you know, that's maybe one thing to take home. What are we doing about that? Obviously, we have to fly to get here. But what are we doing when we plug in our computers and our laptops? And what do we use to power those digital out-of-home screens? So I'm just back from South Africa. And in South Africa right now, you can't really flush the toilet because there isn't any water. So that's the complete opposite of Paris, where there is way too much water at the moment. And this, the Seine has flooded the whole city. So these things are happening around us on an everyday basis. And all of you will encounter them uh, in the next couple of years. So this graph is going down towards a low carbon economy, which is good. The next one I want to go up, it's about investment in local communities. Have you volunteered recently? Have you given your time and maybe done some reading at your daughter or son's school? Have you helped a charity? Hugely important part of the work that I do. Uh, last year we helped 688 charities do their web work, do their media plans, a hugely important way to give back and really support the local communities there. And think about it, we have a goal of getting everyone to give two days a year of their time. Have you done that? Have you given two, years, uh, two days of your time this year to charity? Really something to consider. But it's not just those two things, really. For me, it is what's changing around us and what enormous challenges that throws up but also enormous opportunities. So I'm going to talk a little bit about all the people you've mentioned today, those consumers, those eyeballs, those metrics. What do they really think about all the work that you do and what challenges that present to you and how can we make and work together and make advertising and tech work together better to deliver um, a good world. So I'll talk a little bit about can we deliver innovation that creates better channels that people find less annoying, that they find less intrusive? Can we create messaging on those channels that people find more inspiring? Why are we always selling perfume with half-naked women? Why is it always women doing the dishes? Can we change the messaging in advertising to portray that slightly better world? And can we work together in the digital economy to unlock a huge amount of potential that sits there? Between us, all the revenue that goes through the system, that pays for Google to be free, for Facebook to be free, for Instagram to be free, it depends on this eco ecosystem. And without it, none of that would work. But there are groups that are not really taking part in that. Is it the elderly who can't get online, who can't fill in their tax return? Is it young people who don't have access to the right jobs? Uh, we had a big discussion in my team yesterday, how many women would be in the room here today? And also, now thinking about that, it's actually also 
how many different skin colors we would have in the room today. How can we open that up? Because if you look around, there are probably about five women and there isn't really anybody with a different skin color. So how can we create that diversity within the industry as well? So three slides on things going wrong and then lots of slides on things going really well and really inspiring stuff. So let's take a look. The first thing I want to convince you of is that advertising right now is no different from any other kind of content out there. I know that you see yourselves as distinct from editors of newspapers and journalists and you think words like fake news have nothing to do with you, but they do. Right now in the Western world, 50% of all content that people consume is either advertising itself or advertising driven. My agency has pop groups that they manage. We own rights for marketing the Olympics. We are a huge content producer. And right now, what we are incredibly lucky with is that we're not that heavily regulated. And journalists and newspapers and TV channels are. But if we don't take this responsibility seriously, or if we're not aware of the content that we produce and we see it very differently from that article in The Guardian or that, new, that news report on Sky, what will that mean in the future? It will mean that people start regulating and start influencing it. It will become more difficult to be innovative and do the things that we want. So really start to see yourself as a content producer rather than just an advertiser or somebody who works in the tech world. You are producing content that people love to see. And what responsibilities does that bring with it? On top of that, I think if I fill a room here with politicians, that's probably the only room that is less trusted than a group of advertisers together in a room. So, yes, billions of people see your stuff. Do they trust you? Absolutely not. They highly doubt lots of the things that you're saying. Look at the latest Edelman trust barometer. Look up the detail. How can we make sure that that trust doesn't go down even further? Because if the trust goes down, what happens is things like Barcelona, where they don't want any more further expansion of out-of-home sites because they think they are not pretty, they are littering, they're not selling the right stories. What can we do to convince people that actually we're adding huge value? We keep the digital economy going. We make sure that people get their train and they have a sandwich on the way there, as we've just heard in Italy. And I think lastly, we're talking a lot about data today. And I think a lot of people feel that what we do with the data is probably not entirely above board. We know we do, we all know about GDPR, we're trying to do our best. But GDPR is really a response to people being incredibly confused and incredibly scared. And my best recommendation would probably not ever to tell anybody what happens with their data, because as soon as they understand that a little bit more, they'll be even more frightened. So what impact does that use of data have? And what can we do as an industry to work together to show that we do it wisely, we do it responsibly, and also what can we do to deliver something that actually helps them in their lives and inspires them to do something positive. So as I said, the latter half is all about ideas. I'm gonna go through some outdoor examples from my agency, from other agencies, from everybody in the room here to really inspire you and to really make you think, what can I do that can innovate, that can make the world a slightly better place? So to do that, let's take a look at this. They say you learn from your mistakes. Which is maybe why there are so many smart people in advertising. But it's not enough to avoid past mistakes. We should want to do more good. Because instead of irresponsible car ads normalizing bad behavior, we promote drink-free driving. Instead of annoying audiences, we work with them to help themselves. Instead of thoughtless consumption, we create good deeds that can stretch around the world. And instead of stale cliches, we do work that breaks down stereotypes. Instead of traffic jams, we create apps that cut traffic. And instead of self-indulgence, we use digital technology to enable selfless giving to accelerate ideas that will change the world. Always a terrifying video to play because there will always be somebody in the room 
who's worked on one of those campaigns that I've just put up there. Um, but hopefully I'll now focus on some of those ideas, inspirations. We're in Amsterdam today, so I've picked up this campaign here from the Netherlands last year. We ran, uh, we ran it, uh, it was collaboration between us, Havas was involved, I think another agency did creative, Postoscope on our side, and it was a huge campaign for a Dutch charity focusing on the health of people's lungs. And we used out of home uh, with real time data where people could find out what the condition of the air was around them. So while they were stuck in traffic, there was digital out of home doing live updates on what the um, air quality was like. So in Dutch, it will say, for instance, on that mobile phone, it says the air quality right now where you are. So really geo-targeted is, well, it's red. So slecht means absolutely very bad. Um, and that got loads of people engaged to find out what's the air quality around me. And that created a huge campaign with the charity to put pressure on the government to enact a clean air plan. And what are we doing to tackle those uh, pollutants that we have around us all day? And the really interesting thing here is using out of home and particularly digital out of home to do live um, updates around the air quality. So installing more sensors, even more technology around it that can capture what the air quality is. Or uh, this campaign not done by us in Australia two years ago, which is about engaging people around using sunscreen to fight cancer and skin cancer. Particularly in Australia, the real struggle is to get Generation Z, those people between 16 and 24, to put sunscreen on. They've had a lot of success fighting skin cancers, slightly older people and the younger people they've lost. So this is using really interactive um, out-of-home sites to get kids to engage in trying to save as many lives while they're on the beach and, um, and, fight, and getting donations for that charity to fight skin cancer and making sure that people are constantly thinking about the impact that the sun has while they're having a fun time at the beach and capturing them here at a place where they're waiting for the bus and time waiting to go home. So what you can see here, this is all about different kind of messaging, messaging that might help you live a better life, might be aware of what's out there. We can also have a think about different ways of delivering those messages, different channels. So last year in London, we ran uh, a project to install these smart benches throughout the city. We did it with the cancer cancer research charity here in the UK, uh, here in the UK, and these are really useful pieces of street furniture in the public domain, funded by advertisers and media owners together to create places where you can charge your phone, uh, where people can make donations and learn more about charity. But overall, the overwhelming approach is let's create a better public space that people can use that has more functionality. And that additional data about how many people sit there, how long they sit there, how they're engaged, there's more information for the charity but also for us as um, players in the industry to understand consumer behavior better. Or a campaign we run, ran now three years ago during the Olympics in Brazil when there was a lot of concern about different kinds of diseases uh, that were spread by mosquitoes. This is um, an example of dozen billboards that we converted in Sao Paulo and in Rio de Janeiro to act as basically mosquito killers. So we attracted the local mosquitoes that transmitted the Zika virus and made sure that at the time we would have places where we could stop in particular geo hotspots where the mosquitoes were a lot. We could actually uh, attract them and kill them and make sure that the disease didn't spread any further. So what if we could use our out of home inventory in places in Southeast Asia or in Africa to stop malaria, for instance, or any other diseases that are spreading with the use of mosquitoes? What other technology can we um, bring about that has that change? So I've talked about the messaging on the advertising. I've talked about the way the advertising is delivered. That could be very inspiring. And I think the last example um, I want to touch on links into something called the Sustainable Development Goals. So for those people that haven't heard of them, they are the 17 most pressing things we all need to fix right now, uh, together with the United Nations, with governments, and business needs to be involved as well. Uh, examples are no hunger, no war, peace all around, those kind of things. And they are a huge, basically, to-do list for our organization uh, and for everyone out there. And one of the things we did last year is we were looking for a way to innovate and make people aware of these goals 
so that they know that action is being taken and that they can take action themselves. And we were looking for a new and different way to do that. And that's how we ended up partnering with QVD, in particular looking at Campaign Genius, which they were looking for a way to test out. And because I know nothing about technology, a lot about CSR, there's a tiny little video that explains that campaign. So we worked with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a number of other partners, to put together a campaign to raise awareness of the Sustainable Development Goals. And we set out trying to figure out how can we create, how can we find out what the absolute best ad is to make people aware of that. So we're trying to really hone down on what's the most effective piece of creative and piece of advertising that we have. And we use Campaign Genius to do that. So there should be a little video here that explains that. Campaign Genius optimized each ad by assembling it into a 10 second spot comprised of three goalkeepers videos out of a possible 13 choices with a common branded call to action outro. The local attention of the people passing the screen was measured by Quivity's real-time audience platform and fed to Campaign Genius in real time. Campaign Genius recombined the sequences that yielded the most attention together while discarding the rest, allowing for the most optimized sequences of goalkeepers for each particular screen. This optimization process happens consistently and independently on each screen. With Campaign Genius, each screen can show the best possible combination for its context, audience, and environment. This is the future of place-based advertising. We ran the campaign during Global Goals Week between September 18th and 24th on a selection of digital out-of-home screens in the malls of Westfield on the east and west coast of the United States. After a week, each screen at every location was playing its own optimized version of the campaign that engaged the audience in the best way possible. So really cool stuff. Everybody pays him for free. No money changed hand. The client, Westfield provided all these sites for free. Everybody contributed to help. But ultimately, at the heart of it is, how can we show what the future holds? What data and technology in this AI-driven process can deliver? And that kind of innovation can sometimes only really happen when you try and do something for good together, rather than trying to convince a paying client to do it. They might sometimes say, okay, we're not quite ready for that. So here's a fantastic case study that shows you the absolute power of campaign genius. It helped us to overall make sure that we optimize creative to increase the dwell time and people's attention by 22%. And in certain places, we could even increase the best ads up to 30% in terms of people's awareness. So for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they knew which piece of creative was the most effective. And it helps them develop further campaigns where they can really specialize and really refine how they're messaging and what they're putting across. So it's a fantastic way for all of us to work together to put that innovation out there and to do something good. So as I deliver you to your coffees and your teas, I'm more a tea man myself, what I really hope to have put across here is that between all of us, all these billions of eyeballs, all these millions of visitors, whether they're in Italian train stations or Doha malls, what can we do to work together to consider environmental impacts, community impacts, but most of all, don't take this fragile digital ecosystem for granted. And what can we do to show all these people that watch our screens that we're in it for good as well, that we are responsible. And if we do that, we can do some really innovative stuff together. So I'll be here, the guys will be here, and take it away to your own agencies and own organizations and ask them, you know, where is this energy coming from? Is it green? Or can we do something good to support the UN on their goals? So that's it from me. I think there's maybe some time for questions. And otherwise, we have I'll always give, time you for questions. give you over um, to the coffee. But as you said, we have the coffee break as well. So we can um, have a discussion on the other part. Yes, Mark, let me come to you. Let me come to you. Hi, Mark Fliss from Fepe. Um, are you aware of the photo arc campaign? The photo art campaign? Yes. So you're asking me of all the millions of campaigns each year. The photo art campaign, the... Um, Tell me more. No, it's, it's a, a, a global um, campaign for um, endangered, endangered species. Yeah. It was done in, started in the US, but May the 19th this year, they're, they're doing a global push for every uh, digital media owner to donate some of their space to um, take the campaign globally. So uh, we are talking to Annie Rickard about it at Posterscope. That and sounds brilliant. With the OAAA in America and the various associations around the world. So 
I'd ask any digital media owners in the room if they'd be interested to take part and contribute. There you go, people. Photo Please art, make sure, 2018, the year of endangered species. Do you have some photo inventory? Art. Org, I think exactly. Is, do you have some inventory available? You know, and, and please do think about that. Reach out to your partners and say, how can we collaborate and, and get, get that message out there? And you'll find a lot of people really interested to help on that because this will ultimately enhance our reputations. Not that everybody knows our names on the street, but the usefulness of the technology that we work with and of the work that we do will ultimately be proven. So um, all these things couldn't have happened without the support of all the digital uh, and all the out-of-door media owners and all the agencies involved. So 2018 is going to be the year of the endangered species.